August 6. Jeremiah's Shattered Jar This is what the Lord said to me, Go and buy a clay jar. Then ask some of the leaders of the people and of the priests to follow you. Go out through the gate of broken pots to the garbage dump in the valley of Ben-Hinnom and give them this message. Say to them, Listen to this message from the Lord, you kings of Judah and citizens of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. I will bring a terrible disaster on this place, and the ears of those who hear about it will ring. For Israel has forsaken me and turned this valley into a place of wickedness. The people burn incense to foreign gods, idols never before acknowledged by this generation, by their ancestors, or by the kings of Judah. And they have filled this place with the blood of innocent children. They have built pagan shrines to Baal, and they burn their sons as sacrifices to Baal. I have never commanded such a horrible deed. It never even crossed my mind to command such a thing. So beware, for the time is coming, says the Lord, when this garbage dump will no longer be called Topheth or the Valley of Ben-Hinnom, but the Valley of Slaughter. For I will upset the careful plans of Judah and Jerusalem. I will allow the people to be slaughtered by invading armies, and I will leave their dead bodies as food for the vultures and wild animals. I will reduce Jerusalem to ruins, making it a monument to their stupidity. All who pass by will be astonished and will gasp at the destruction they see there. I will see to it that your enemies lay siege to the city until all the food is gone. Then those trapped inside will eat their own sons and daughters and friends. They will be driven to utter despair." As these men watch you, Jeremiah, smash the jar you brought. Then say to them, This is what the Lord of heaven's army says, As this jar lies shattered, so I will shatter the people of Judah and Jerusalem beyond all hope of repair. They will bury the bodies here in Topheth, the garbage dump, until there is no more room for them. This is what I will do to this place and its people, says the Lord. I will cause this city to become defiled like Topheth. Yes, all the houses in Jerusalem, including the palace of Judah's kings, will become like Topheth. All the houses where you burned incense on the rooftops to your star gods and where liquid offerings were poured out to your idols. Then Jeremiah returned from Topheth, the garbage dump where he had delivered this message, and he stopped in front of the temple of the Lord. He said to the people there, This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. I will bring disaster upon this city and its surrounding towns, as I promised, because you have stubbornly refused to listen to me. Jeremiah and Pasher Now Pasher, son of Immer, the priest in charge of the temple of the Lord, heard what Jeremiah was prophesying. So he arrested Jeremiah the prophet and had him whipped and put in stocks at the Benjamin gate of the Lord's temple. The next day, when Pasher finally released him, Jeremiah said, Pasher, the Lord has changed your name. From now on, you are to be called the man who lives in terror. For this is what the Lord says, I will send terror upon you and all your friends, and you will watch as they are slaughtered by the swords of the enemy. I will hand the people of Judah over to the king of Babylon. He will take them captive to Babylon or run them through with the sword. And I will let your enemies plunder Jerusalem. All the famed treasures of the city, the precious jewels and gold and silver of your kings will be carried off to Babylon. As for you, Pasher, you and all your household will go as captives to Babylon. There you will die and be buried you and all your friends to whom you prophesied, that everything would be all right. Jeremiah's Complaint O Lord, you misled me, and I allowed myself to be misled. You were stronger than I am, and you overpowered me. Now I am mocked every day. Everyone laughs at me. When I speak, the words burst out, violence and destruction, I shout. So these messages from the Lord have made me a household joke. But if I say I'll never mention the Lord or speak in his name, his word burns in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones. I am worn out trying to hold it in. I can't do it. I have heard the many rumors about me. They call me the man who lives in terror. They threaten, if you say anything, we will report it. Even my old friends are watching me, waiting for a fatal slip. He will trap himself, they say, and then we will get our revenge on him. But the Lord stands beside me like a great warrior. Before him my persecutors will stumble. 
They cannot defeat me. They will fail and be thoroughly humiliated. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of heaven's armies, you test those who are righteous, and you examine the deepest thoughts and secrets. Let me see your vengeance against them, for I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for though I was poor and needy, he rescued me from my oppressors. Yet I curse the day I was born. May no one celebrate the day of my birth. I curse the messenger who told my father, Good news, you have a son. Let him be destroyed like the cities of old that the Lord overthrew without mercy. Terrify him all day long with battle shouts because he did not kill me at birth. Oh, that I had died in my mother's womb, that her body had been my grave. Why was I ever born? My entire life has been filled with trouble, sorrow, and shame. Nebuchadnezzar Besieges Jerusalem During the third year of King Jehoiakim's reign in Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord gave him victory over King Jehoiakim of Judah and permitted him to take some of the sacred objects from the temple of God. So Nebuchadnezzar took them back to the land of Babylonia and placed them in the treasure house of his God. Daniel in Nebuchadnezzar's Court Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, his chief of staff, to bring to the palace some of the young men of Judah's royal family and other noble families who had been brought to Babylon as captives. Select only strong, healthy, and good-looking young men, he said. Make sure they are well-versed in every branch of learning, are gifted with knowledge and good judgment, and are suited to serve in the royal palace. Train these young men in the language and literature of Babylon. The king assigned them a daily ration of food and wine from his own kitchens. They were to be trained for three years, and then they would enter the royal service. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were four of the young men chosen, all from the tribe of Judah. The chief of staff renamed them with these Babylonian names. Daniel was called Belteshazzar. Hananiah was called Shadrach. Mishael was called Meshach. Azariah was called Abednego. But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. He asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Now God had given the chief of staff both respect and affection for Daniel. But he responded, I am afraid of my lord the king, who has ordered that you eat this food and wine. If you become pale and thin compared to the other youths your age, I am afraid the king will have me beheaded. Daniel spoke with the attendant who had been appointed by the chief of staff to look after Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Please test us for ten days on a diet of vegetables and water, Daniel said. At the end of the ten days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. The attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. So after that, the attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the food and wine provided for the others. God gave these four young men an unusual aptitude for understanding every aspect of literature and wisdom, and God gave Daniel the special ability to interpret the meanings of visions and dreams. When the training period ordered by the king was completed, the chief of staff brought all the young men to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and no one impressed him as much as Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the royal service. Whenever the king consulted them in any manner requiring wisdom and balanced judgment, he found them ten times more capable than any of the magicians and enchanters in his entire kingdom. Daniel remained in the royal service until the first year of the reign of King Cyrus.